Turning back to our top story this morning, about 100,000 people are still in northern Gaza, with about 600,000 having left ahead of a warning from Israel about an imminent ground offensive. Canadian Mansour Schumann lives in Gaza City. He was forced to evacuate his home, travel south with his five children and his wife after his neighborhood was heavily bombed by Israeli forces. He is joining us from Khan Yunus in the southern Gaza Strip to share his experiences. Uh, good to see you this morning, Mansour. As well, as Khan Yunus was also hit with Israeli airstrikes overnight. Are you and your family safe right now? Um, not only overnight, but they, uh, during the daylight was the heaviest bombardment in Khan Yunus since the start of the war 11 days ago. Uh, my family uh, did not sleep. Uh, they had to leave their apartment a couple of times with the risk of uh, nearby bombings uh, hurting the building that they're staying at. Mm. Uh, they're currently staying at a friend's house. Uh, I'm currently staying in the main hospital here in Khan Yunus, uh, trying to get the news out in English to the international audience, explaining the humanitarian crisis that is happening right now in Gaza. What kind of questions are your children asking you, Mansour? I have five kids, as you see on the picture. Uh, the, the younger ones, they, they stopped asking questions. Whenever they hear that an F-16 bomb came down, they start jumping up and laughing and starting hugging us, saying how much they love us. Uh, the middle one is trying to um, analyze you know, what is happening exactly. And he keeps asking his, uh, his mother and the people around the questions, as in, OK, what do they gain once they bring down the civilian building? You know, like, what is the gain that is going to happen based on that? Uh, my eldest two daughters, um, they're in a kind of semi-depression, despair. Uh, sometimes they will just cry hysterically. However, um, they are all, you know, steadfast. We are all believers in God. We are believers in faith. And we know that we will get through this one way or another, together with the rest of people in Gaza. And hopefully no one in the world has to go through what we are going through right now. Whether it is white phosphorus being thrown at us, whether it is a heavy bombing, whether it's no electricity, no internet, it's most of the city, whether it's the lack of food, whether it's the lack of basic human necessities such as fuel, uh, uh, medical and humanitarian catastrophe is going to happen in Gaza unless a ceasefire happens, unless aid is allowed to come back in and help the most densely populated area in the whole world, 2.2 million in 300 square kilometers. And as you said, many have been displaced. So wherever it's more concentrated, it's now even worse. Mansour, I want to touch uh, on the humanitarian crisis that you know we've been reporting on, but that you've been experiencing firsthand. We understand food and water in short supply, people digging for wells. I understand people are eating mainly bread. You had to line up for five hours to get a loaf of bread for your family to eat. What else are you seeing firsthand around you? Not myself, but um, uh, my family my, and my wife's extended family, they send their elder children every day before sunrise so that they can get two bags of uh, pita bread back to the family uh, five hours later. Uh, the main source of food right now are whatever they stored for emergencies. The people in Gaza went through four or five different wars in the last 15, 16 years during the blockade. So they have experience and try to store food. However, given the amount of displacements and the people losing their houses uh, and uh, the increase in the number of, of in the population over the last few years, these food rations such as dates, uh, rice, spaghetti, uh, tuna, uh, canned beans are running out. Um, as you said, water is being dug out from wells and uh, sometimes being very salty. There are some desalination of uh, uh, solar powered, uh, panel powered plants, which are able to provide with some uh, drinking water, but it's not enough. Uh, Israel has, yeah, we all, we, we rely on Israel for electricity, uh, water, and many other resources, and they've all been cut off. Uh, Mansur, two questions for you. Um, what was your experience when you went to Rafa to the crossing there, and do you plan to stay in Gaza, or are you planning to come back to Canada? Um, there was um, like a, a rumor uh, between the international uh, uh, residents here uh, that the uh, border was going to open around five days ago. 
So even though the road was extremely um, dangerous, and during that day, people were bombed on that road, and we saw evidence of that wreckage on our way there, we tried to, you know, to, to, to take our families and have them leave the border. However, we were surprised to see that it's totally shut. No authority, no authority figures were there to answer our questions or help people through. We also saw on the other side uh, dozens of trucks filled with aid, fuel, food, uh, water, waiting to come in. However, they were not allowed. During that day, uh, we felt um, when it was around sunset, the bombing started again in the Rafah area. So some of the people stayed at the Rafah uh, UN schools as refugees, and others like myself, uh, moving from north, decided to stay in the south area of the Gulf Rift in Khan Yunus, uh, keeping my family with those friends, and myself trying to help out um, in the support uh, through different areas such as media. Uh, personally, I'm not planning to leave anymore uh, because I believe that as an able man, uh, I can hopefully add some value and try to relieve uh, the people in Gaza in whatever measure necessary I can. However, my wife and kids, they are an added burden uh, right now, and uh, uh, they're not used to the current situation. Uh, and I think them leaving together with anyone who wants to leave these small conditions could be allowed. I know your family, friends, and former colleagues across Canada and Calgary in particular are watching closely. Uh, they want to make sure that you are safe. Thank you for joining us today, sharing your experiences. Please stay safe and our best to you and your family. Thank you very much for your time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.